Hello everybody. Glad to have you back. This is tutorial three for this iOS app strategy game Divine Right. And as you can see, the map hasn't changed. I haven't had the courage to press the end turn yet. So we'll just um, take a quick look where we are. We've modified our settings. We're sacrificing some growth for some material. Even in Odin Spite, we're doing that as well. We have a Morningstar unit that is being healed, brought back up to strength by the castle. Up here, I have a Longbowman who's in position for defensive fire should somebody attack either of these guys. I have two wounded units, a Pikeman, and a lightly armored Longswordsman. Now, if I wanted to try to expedite the destruction of this castle, I could attack it. But as you can see, it's on defensive terrain. It's in a forest, so it's going to have extra defense. And my units are barely any stronger than, than the castle. So I'm going to try to, to beat it through attrition. I believe we've already done everything we can with... Oh, my longbowman had another, another shot in him, so I took another pot shot at the at the pikeman and that is that so since my economy is pretty precarious for reasons that I talked about before I'm not going to build any more units um, oftentimes I actually don't build the second castle so quickly instead I will focus on defending my first castle and expanding it getting its population limit up to um, the second level which I believe is 110 or 120 as opposed to 50 that's a very good successful strategy too but here we go let's see what happens when I end the turn so what do we have here um, another unit came from out of the blue that's interesting maybe he's on that side of the board the pikeman right here clearly tried to attack one of my units but got a little beat on and we took another point off that off that castle. This Morningstar guy is actually tougher than any of my troops. Um, he's lightly armored, as you can see, um, and he's at full strength. So I'm not quite ready to, to deal with him yet. He's also in a forest, which um, which makes it a little tough. I am going to take some pot shots at him from my longbowman. Unfortunately, with armor and in a forest, I'm not having a lot of success. I will um, try to take out this unit, which I was able to. And then instead of attacking him again, I'm actually gonna go back into the go back into the forest and, and continue the siege. It would be nice if this guy was ready and capable to go engage him. He's really not, but he's not very expensive. So I'm actually going to move him into the mountains adjacent to that unit, hoping that that unit will decide to um, to attack him. From Odin's spite, I had to look at my economy, <laughs> and it's, it's rotten. Um, but there may be something I can afford if I sacrifice some armor. And that something is a crossbowman. Bonus against heavy armor. This guy doesn't have heavy armor. But... Um, but crossbowmen are very useful, primarily because when they attack, just like the longbowmen, there is no attack against them. There's no defense, so they're not going to lose anything when they're when they're attacking, and that can be really handy. So I'm gonna I'm gonna recruit him. I'm gonna check um, my ducal camp. And I'm going to sacrifice that money that I'm generating because I really need my population to grow. Like we've talked about before, as my population grows, this slider position for material is going to produce more material. So I'm hoping that's going to help me before I run out of gold. And I'm hoping this guy can, um, can hold him off for a while. Here we go. Well, <laughs> he didn't exactly hold him off, although he didn't get killed. <clears throat> he um, he did get crushed and get got forced off the mountain, and didn't do any damage to him. 
My economy is looking very bad right now. I say that because you can see my my gold is minus 15 a turn. My material is minus 15. I really need to get some more material. So that's what I'm going to do. It's not going to help my gold situation, which means I'm not going to have a lot more troops coming in. But I'll see if I can heal him. And I may try to take a pot shot with my crossbowman. One damage. Ah, another damage. Well, at least we hurt him a little. My crossbowman's very vulnerable, but that's life. I'm going to move my longbowman down. This puts him in a position to support the crossbowman should the crossbowman be attacked. And I'm going to take some more pot shots. Not much, but a point's a point. Over here, I still don't think I'm I'm ready for this assault. But time's running out, so I'm going to try it. I'm going to use my weaker unit first. Aha! So he was able to force a surrender on the castle, which is very, very, very good. It's not a big castle. It's still growing population-wise, but it'll allow me to start getting some cash which I am in desperate need of. And let's see. So the Morning Star unit did force my crossbowman back, but he didn't kill him, so that's pretty good. Um, my economy is now plus 14, which isn't great, but it's a lot better than it was. I'm producing a little more materials than I need. I have plus two population here, which is going to max out the ducal camp. That's okay. I'm still growing here by two each turn, producing some gold. Things are starting to look up. I'd rather get rid of that guy, but I'm not in a position to do it at the moment. I am going to get my crossbowman back down into the zone of control so he can heal. Bring my sacrificial morning star man back up again hoping that the computer will attack him in the mountains that might be a decently fair fight and I take a couple pot shots ah that's a very good pot shot so although it only did one damage it drove him out of the forest which is fantastic I'm now gonna move to my fifth infantry who as you know has armor and a longsword and he is going to pursue and get rid of him. So he gained a level. Um, for the for the level gains, you can increase either their attack, their two hit, their defense, or their movement. All of which have a lot of advantages. Uh, personally, movement is really important because you can get an extra attack. That's great for things like crossbowmen and longbowmen who don't take damage on every attack. It's also good for exploring and for what you see. But I am going to put all my points in attack because that's pretty useful too. And that looks like the edge of the board, so I'm going to explore a little more there. Bring my crossbowman here, just in case. And move him one more space. I'd rather, I wish I had him in a um, castle zone of control, but I don't. So, there you go. I'm going to wrap up this tutorial as well. I know a lot hasn't happened, but hopefully some of the explanation has helped. As you can see, I've managed to fight off the first wave of computer attacks, take one of his city or castles. I now have three castles. My economy is starting to pick up, and I'm starting to feel pretty good about this game. Now, of course, I'm only playing against one enemy. I would have had to be a lot sharper if I was playing against multiple enemies, but some of those strategies are for you to find out. Um, although, I will give you a hint that upgrading your castle, focusing on something like farming, can really kickstart your economy and get things going so that you can have a much easier game. Anyway, thank you very much for watching the videos, and I will talk to you soon. Bye-bye.